Um, I'm going to present you the result of our phase 2A study, as well as the next study we are going to start um, in the US. Uh, as already explained by uh, Lionel this morning, uh, QGC001 is a prodrug. Um, once it enters the brain, it is cut into two active molecules, inhibits the aminopeptidase A, which led to a decrease in angiotensin 3, and finally, a decrease in vasopressin, in sympathetic uh, nerve activity, as well as an improvement of the baroreflex, all these three factors finally decrease uh, the blood pressure. Uh, what we uh, have known uh, until now uh, in animal is that QGC001 is able to decrease uh, blood pressure in hypertensive rats in two different models, HHR, which is the general model for hypertension, and DOCA salt rats, which is a model which is closer to the salt-sensitive population uh, described by uh, Professor Ferdinand this morning. And interestingly, uh, the effect on blood pressure was uh, higher in DOCA salt rats as compared to uh, SHR rats. Whereas in a normal rat, without, uh, without hypertension, there were no decrease in blood pressure and this may be explained by the fact that aminopeptidase A is specially overexpressed in patients or in animals with hypertension. That's why QGC001 has no effect when the blood pressure uh, is not high. And in human, uh, the results as far as now are totally consistent. We observed no change in blood pressure in uh, uh, healthy and uh, volunteers with normal blood pressure, no change in heart rate, and uh, no change in uh, re renal function as well. In terms of uh, kinetics, QGC001 is rapidly absorbed. Uh, the time to, max to reach maximum concentration is about four hours. Uh, the half-life of elimination, about five hours. And the steady state, which is the time after uh, the, uh, the blood level is stable, is about four days. So, uh, Professor uh, Michel Azizi, uh, the principal investigator for our phase 2A study, presented the result uh, last few days ago, last week, at uh, the European Society of Hypertension Congress. This study um, was the first pilot study with QGC001 in human, in hypertension. And really, the aim of the pilot study was to confirm what we have observed so far in animal, to uh, confirm the proof of concept, to try to identify um, predictive factors for the response, as well, of course, to help us to design uh, the further trials. Of course, this is a pilot study, and what we really wanted to achieve was a fast validation of the proof of concept in human. That's why we, to go fast, we include a small sample size, only 34 patients. And the study was not, this sample size was not based on a power calculation. The treatment duration was short as well, only one month, and we include unselected population, not, not specifically uh, the population with uh, low renin, high vasopressin, or salt-dependent population we aimed to target in the future. Few words about the study design. Uh, this was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-control crossover study. All the patients stopped their uh, anti-hypertensive drugs two weeks prior to randomization and were therefore treated with QGC001 for one month 250 BID for one week, followed by 500 milligrams BID for two weeks, or matching placebo. And the primary endpoint of the study was the change, the difference between placebo and QGC001 in change from baseline in a daytime ambulatory blood pressure. And the study was conducted in four different centers uh, in France. We aimed to select adults patients 
below 75 years, so not uh, specifically elderly, in a grade, with grade one or two hypertension, and with normal renal function. 40 patients were uh, screened, uh, six patients were not included, so finally 34 patients were randomized, so this is the intention to treat population, as well as the safety population, we will present the result. Four patients discontinued uh, during the trial, and one patient had a protocol deviation, so the per protocol uh, population is 29 patients. I won't present here uh, the result of the per, um, per protocol population, but the results are similar or a little bit better as compared to the ITT population. As you can see on the table on the right, mainly male Caucasian patients were included, average age seven, uh, 50, 57, so relatively young patients for hypertension, uh, two-thirds of male, and uh, a vast majority of uh, uh, white uh, patients. The, the baseline of his blood pressure was not so high. On average, the systolic blood pressure was uh, 180 uh, and 48, and the, systolic blood uh, the diastolic blood pressure was uh, 93. <coughs> As you can see here on the graph, um, which is uh, blood pressure, across 24 hours, ambulatory blood pressure. There was no difference at baseline between the two groups, placebo and active, uh, placebo in blue and active in red. This slide is probably the most important slide about the study results. The table on the right displays uh, the results of the multivariate analysis on the primary endpoint, so daytime systolic ambulatory blood pressure. And as you can see, baseline blood pressure as well as uh, QGC treatment uh, was uh, the only significant factors to decrease blood pressure. All the other factors had no effect on blood pressure, including the active renin, which is important because it means that whatever the level of actidrenin, uh, the treatment effect was the same. And the graph illustrates uh, the effect on baseline blood pressure. The red line is patient treated uh, with QGC001, and you can see that the higher is the initial blood pressure, the greater is the drop in blood pressure which is not necessarily the case in patients with is with placebo. The blue line is quite flat. So finally, <coughs> with the increase of blood pressure, the difference between placebo and QGC001 increased. And for instance, if you uh, pick patient with um, baseline blood pressure around one, uh, 170, you can see that the difference between active and placebo is around 10 millimeters. The next slide shows you the univariate analysis on the primary endpoint. You can see that patients treated uh, with QGC001 in red, whatever the time, has a lower blood pressure as compared to patients treated with placebo in blue. And on average, on the daytime, the difference between QGC001 and placebo is minus 2.7 millimeters with a p-value of 0.16. And the office blood pressure decrease, difference, not shown on the graph, is minus 4.7 millimeters with a p-value of 0.15. Uh, don't, don't be surprised about the p-value. As I already said, this is a pilot study, and uh, the, the study was not powered to show a significant difference between placebo or active. Uh, this is not a phase three uh, registrational trial. Um, but it means that there is only 16% uh, that the difference observed between placebo and active uh, is, uh, due, uh, is, is by chance, which is uh, uh, the meaning of, of the p-value. Important point, 
uh, there were no change in uh, the main uh, plasma hormone involved uh, into the blood pressure regulation, neither in uh, the treated group nor in placebo. So this is very important, uh, and especially uh, active renin and aldosterone. And this is important because it confirmed that uh, this is an original mode of action, and which is not mediated by renin or aldosterone. And this is the main difference uh, with other uh, therapeutic classes, such as ACE inhibitors. The safety profile uh, in the study was similar to what was observed in our phase one uh, studies. Only three serious adverse events in the treated group and two in the placebo, and including one allergic reaction uh, in each group. There were no significant change from baseline in uh, potassium or sodium blood level, which is really important in terms of safety, not only for hypertension, but also for heart failure. And uh, there, wa there was no uh, significant change in uh, creatinine level, so no um, deleterious effect on renal function. Of course, as I already said, this study had a lot of uh, limitations. The first one is a small sample size, and we are in the field of, blood of hypertension, and blood pressure has a very uh, important within subject and uh, intra subject uh, and inter subject uh, variability. So finally, uh, there is a lack of power um, in, in the trial. This is a four weeks treatment study only. Uh, most of the study in hypertension uh, include a two uh, months, eight weeks um, treatment period. And what we have seen in the, uh, in the study is that the effect after four weeks is more important as compared to what observed after two weeks. So uh, probably uh, with a longer uh, tr uh, treatment duration, the effect would, would have been uh, larger. But as I said, we wanted and we achieved a fast validation of the proof of concept in human. And finally, we include an, a non-selected uh, hypertensive patient, unselected population, and not specially low renin ivasopressin or salt-dependent population. 88% uh, of the patients were white. And if you, <coughs> if you remember the results, uh, we include a population with relatively mild uh, um, hypertension. The baseline uh, value for blood pressure was quite low, and we have demonstrated in the study that the higher the level of blood pressure, the higher the effect. So in conclusion, in the multivariate analysis, the predictor for blood pressure response were uh, the baseline blood pressure and the treatment effect. As compared to placebo, four-week administration of QGC-001 decreased daytime ambulatory blood, systolic ambulatory blood pressure by 2.7, decreased the office blood pressure by 4.7, had no effect on the hormone involved in blood pressure regulation, and was safe. Brain aminopathy does A uh, inhibition uh, elicits an anti-hypertensive response in hypertensive humans, as already demonstrated uh, in animals, opening the way uh, for the future trial. Let me come back a little bit where we, where we are now um, and to show the consistency between the results we uh, had in animals and in humans. There is no effect on QGC-001 on blood pressure in uh, normotensive rats or human, whereas there was a decrease in blood pressure in uh, SHR hypertensive rats, consistent with that observed in this unselected population of patients in, in, in the phase 2A study. And in, as, or, as I already said, in another model of uh, hypertensive rats, doca salt rats, the effect was larger as compared to uh, SHR. And this is the purpose of our New Hope study uh, to study QGC-001 on a more selective, selected hypertensive patient supposed to be low renin, salt dependent. 
So the new OAP study will start um, in, in the US uh, by, by the end of the year, and I would like to thank uh, Professor Ferdinand, who is the PI of the study, as well as Professor Black, members of the steering committee, uh, for the help uh, to design the study. Uh, the study will be a phase two another phase two study, open label, with a treatment period of eight weeks. All the patients will stop their treatment two weeks prior randomization and uh, will receive after QDC001 uh, 250 milligrams BID for two weeks. And the dose can be increased up to 500 milligrams BID. And if necessary, uh, hydrochlorothiazide 25 milligrams uh, can be added during the study. So what we are really testing is a therapeutic strategy, dose increase of QGC, and if needed, combination with hydrochlorothiazide, which is the current uh, way to treat uh, this patient. The study objective, the primary endpoint of the trial is change from baseline uh, to uh, week eight in uh, office systolic blood pressure, and this time we have chosen office systolic blood pressure and not ambulatory blood pressure. But we will be very careful, uh, and um, Henry Black explained to you the, the, uh, the difficulties of uh, measuring the blood pressure. So we will follow uh, what has been done in the sprint trial, so be very careful, and to average different values. Secondary endpoint, diastolic blood, of his blood pressure, change in blood pressure after four weeks to see if we have a difference in four weeks. But also we will record ambulatory blood pressure to be able to compare the results uh, with the previous trial. We will also calculate the percentage of responders defined as subject who normalized their blood pressure uh, at week eight and try to identify predictive factors for responders after eight weeks of treatment. And of course, uh, usual safety endpoints uh, such as adverse event as well as lab test. In this study, we really want to target a different population close to the salt dependent low renin vasopressin populations that's why we decide to include male and female without any limitation in terms of age, um, because elderly are more often uh, likely to, to have a salt-dependent hypertension with primary hypertension. We want to screen patients with a systolic blood pressure above 148 and not 140, uh, and 45, sorry, not 140, to select more hypertensive patients and uh, also to target more complicated patients with additional risk factors such as uh, overweight or obesity. And we also want to include in the trial at least 50% of patients coming from minorities, African Americans or Hispanic. Study metrics, 250 patients should be enrolled into the trial in 25 different uh, sites across the US. And we expect to have the first patient included into the trial by the end of the year. And the last patient, last visit, the first quarter to, uh, to 2019, in order to get the result uh, by the second quarter of two nine, uh, 2019. Thank you um, for your attention. Um, I will be more than happy to answer any burning question you may have. Or the, yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for coming to New York City. <laughs> it's a nice town. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the clinical trials <coughs> in the US. If you had a chance, uh, can you talk about CRO? Which one you picked? And what would be the decree correct? Criteria for picking that particular CRO, if you can talk about it, of course. Yes, of course. Um, the CRO has been, has been already uh, chosen. MedPace is uh, the CRO that will um, conduct the trial. 
but uh, with the support of um, uh, a company called uh, Inside Edge. Uh, Inside Edge uh, is close to the um, ABC Association of uh, Black Cardiologists to help us to work uh, especially with minorities. Yes, so for the pilot study, the hypertension, uh, the uh, low probability of success, 15%, that's because of the design of the study, the low sample size. Is that the reason for that? Uh, there, are, there are, in fact, two reasons. Uh, the, the first one is, of course, because of the sample size, uh, there are 30 patients, so it's not enough to show a significant difference. And the other reason is probably because we have selected by chance. Um, patient with a very low blood pressure and uh, as explained if the blood pressure is low or normal blood pressure uh, there is no effect of the drug because uh, aminopeptide as A is not overexpressed in this patient so that's why we change uh, the inclusion criteria for the next study in the US okay perhaps I can uh, hand over to Max Jacob for the panel discussion and if you have any additional questions.